I am an AI data scientist and I come from the future. And I have a plan and as you heard before, there is no such thing as a free lunch and definitely no free lunch here at InspireFest. So I'm gonna make three things. I'm gonna change you into right brain humans. I'm gonna recruit you into the future and I'm gonna give you your first mission in only 15 minutes. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because by the time you walk out of that door, you won't be the same person, I promise you. Right, because I work in AI, I get bombarded by everyone with one question. Are the robots going to take our jobs? I seriously get that question from CEOs, from banks, you know, I do a lot of uh, keynotes, I do a lot of internal workshops, and I work in AI. And it's something that is beginning to concern me. So the first thing I'm showing you here is assemblage. As an AI person, I work towards a future where humans and machines, mindful of the word, machines, not robots, will work together as an extension of the things we need. We need extra brains. Who wants to do some tedious calculations? Nobody wants that. Let the machine do it, exactly. Unfortunately, we live in a completely raptured world, run by people that should not be there, with behaviors that have created the demise of nature, the demise of wealth, the demise of, you know, the common sense. But there is hope, and is rogue, because who here is under the age of 2022? Raise your hands, I wanna see you, you're my people. Centennials, the centennials are the new hope because centennials are people that are right brain human beings. When they wanna learn something, they go on the internet and they become the first video flash editor in the nation or in their classroom. They wanna work for themselves. They feel the pain of the world. They feel the pain of the animals. They want a society that is equal, a future that is bright and that is human. And that is what I work for. So you guys, I'm going to be like Princess Leia. You're my only hope. <laughs> what happens is that the chaos in AI is such that the big tech people that you recognize here are beginning to express their concerns very, very publicly. I mean, in particular, Bill Gates, God bless him, he has been saying stuff like, if you develop robots, and you don't tell the world what they're for, you should pay more taxes. Who's he talking about? Exactly, don't say the name. We wanna be politically correct. So I want to avoid that. My daily work is to avoid that, okay? And now we're gonna talk about robots. Because how many people love R2D2? Raise your hands. And how many people love C3PO? Oh, you do love him? You're a minority. <laughs> Have you ever been in front of a humanoid robot? Who's being in front of a humanoid robot? It's scary. It's scary. Look at these guys. I'm going to go back. Look at those guys. Do they look like they want to be friendly? No. The first time I saw those videos, when they showed how the robot was being kicked, I thought, oh my God, here we go. I followed robotics for 20 years and I felt the fear within me. I said, I have to do something. Recently, that company was sold to a Japanese bank. And we don't know why, exactly. So, many people are beginning to feel funny about robots and in fact, Many people are saying, why do they have to look like us? Can they not look like R2D2? Exactly. Because 
what is happening in AI is that it's not regulated. Hey, you want to open a shop and serve coffee to people? You have to be regulated. Hey, you want 100 million and develop some robots? No problemo. Scary, scary. So what I'm going to try to do is to show you where humans are going to fit in the future. I'm going to take you into the future with me. Remember I said I come from the future? So the way that humans are going to survive a society full of technology and incrementally technified and with systems that are thinking by themselves is if we remain right brain because the machines are going to do all the left boring stuff. And if you don't believe me, look at how the world is reacting in recent years to the tsunami of digitalization. We're like om now. How many people have been to a meditation class? How many, how many people practice yoga? Exactly. I didn't grow up like that, by the way. Yeah, but now everything is like holistic, mindful, my feelings, exactly. We are fighting for right brain approaches, yeah? So I'm going to teach you how to code. Let's imagine that we have an AI project. So in AI, you start with a hypothesis, and then you start gathering your assumptions, yeah? So if I was to code, Let's consider that that is my code, the code that I'm teaching the machine. Hey, machine, I'm going to teach you about the world. This is what goes on, so you start learning, yeah? So let's read it together. If she's amazing, she won't be easy, yeah? So we believe that. If she's easy, she won't be amazing. Great. If she's worth it, you won't give up. This is when the machine begins to think, what a bizarre and logical behavior, right? Because machines are logical. If you give up, you are not worthy. Have we taught the machine what worthy means? That, that is requiring quite a lot of coding. Truth is, everybody's going to hurt you. You just got to find the ones worth suffering for. At that point, the machine self-combusts. Because humans are illogical. Because we like to suffer for love. We find pleasure in the quest. Isn't that illogical? But that's the most beautiful thing about us, about our right brain approaches to life. Which is why every time I read that somebody's trying to teach machines to be emotional, I'm having a super laugh. Not a big laugh, I'm having a super laugh. Good luck, you guys. Never a machine will feel what we feel when we read that. Did you feel something? It's beautiful. It's thoughtful. It's romantic. You think a machine is going to appreciate that? No. And now I'm going to show you why our brains beat any machine. That is Sony Labs in Pinewood. And what these guys do is they have developed the most high-resolution cameras and plasma screens. Now, when a camera shows you those cheetahs, the camera doesn't know where you're going to be looking at. So every single inch is perfect in terms of light, the pixels, quality, yeah? But when humans look at anything that has a face, the eyes, the eyes are the red dots, go to the face. So you say, well, how at the same time I can see the entire animal? And I'm going to say, because humans see with their minds. Great. Now you're like, she's tripping. So I'm going to continue with my example number two. When the eye looks at a landscape, you know, like perception, you know, our eyes are capturing both the depth and the nearby. And then our mind puts the frames together so that we don't get dizzy. Because we see with our minds. I'm getting closer to convincing you. And now he is, here is the punchline. This is an RGB. 
And RGB in color theory is where you actually show the color spectrum of uh, cameras, yeah? Can anyone see the color brown anywhere, anywhere, anybody? No, no, because your plasma TV at home, those little lights that come out of the screen and eventually you sit there and you see this wonderful match, they don't show brown. So how on earth you watch a nature program and you see those amazing trees and they are all brown? Because your mind sees their shape, remembers their color in the real world, and then finesses them into brown. So now do you believe me when I tell you that you see with your mind? Exactly. Now let's bring the robots and win the game. Because they ain't gonna see brown, ever. <laughs> Ladies, the best tennis player in history, winning the last slam while pregnant. I'm sorry, Mr. McEnroe. <laughs> Do you think, you think Miss Williams is the best because she's got the most athletic body that can run for miles on a court? Or do you think she is this great all-time champion because she has accumulated tacit knowledge? Tacit knowledge is knowledge that humans accumulate based on experience of doing something for a long time. It is knowledge that cannot be put into words. Therefore, I cannot write code Therefore, I cannot teach a machine to have tacit knowledge, to have know-how, to be in there 20 million times. You do it with your eyes closed. No, but we can because we are humans. Exactly, exactly. Fight for your rights, beastie boys and girls. Let's create AI that is helpful to us, not our doom. And who is with me? Lady, wonderful lady in, in the European Parliament. Last year, she put together a working group in which she said, if we don't regulate the development of robots, this is gonna end up in tears. And now, my right-wing people, pick up your phones, because this is your first mission. These are the people in her team. These are the people you need to write. And the first thing is going to say, thank you for doing this for all of us. I live in this country. My children use machines. Sometimes I feel that these machines are getting out of hand. I'm here to help. Bravo. Because if we don't get organized, we will not have a beautiful, bright future where we all feel happy, we continue to be right brain humans, and then we have jobs that we actually enjoy because the future of our jobs is about enjoying what we love doing and letting the machines carry out things while we become more creative. When your children want to be film directors, photo photographers, dancers, let them be right brain humans. If your son or daughter wants to be a mathematician, let them be, because mathematics is very creative. But let's use our right brains and let's create a world where the machines don't have names of humans, the robots don't look like us, because it is confusing and it's alienating. Are you with me? Great, well then, take action. And with that, I leave you and I love you. <laughs>